So the topic that I'm going to cover today is UK Sinha panel for uh, uh, MSMEs, which was formed recently. Now, in order to understand UK Sinha panel recommendations, it's important that you understand what are MSMEs. So how uh, does the government qualify an enterprise and as, as an MSME? What is the importance of MSMEs in India? So various facts which prove to us the importance of MSMEs. This is going to be important both in essay for you as well as these facts might be asked in the examination specifically in phase two. Number three, various institutions for MSMEs, the role specifically paid by, uh, played by SIDBI and how the role of SIDBI can be enhanced, what exactly needs to be done. What are the challenges faced by MSME and the recommendations of UK SENA panel on MSMEs, micro, small and medium enterprises? Okay, so the first one is how do uh, how does the government identify an enterprise as an MSME? As you all must be aware, it is purely based on investments in plant and machinery or investment in equipment based upon whether an enterprise is a manufacturing enterprise or a service enterprise. If it is manufacturing, it is based upon investment in plant and machinery. If it is a service enterprise, the investment in equipment is used to identify whether an enterprise is an MSME or not. Now, MSME stands for micro, small and medium enterprises. So if your investment in plant and machinery is up to 25 lakh, then you are a micro manufacturing enterprise. If it is up to 10 lakh, then you are a micro service enterprise. Similarly, for small, the limit is 25 lakh to 5 crore and 10 lakh uh, to 2 crore for service enterprises. Similarly, for medium enterprises, it is 5 to 10 crore and in the service sector, it is 2 crore to 5 crore. So these are the things that you have to remember. Please do not forget them. These are age old questions which have been regularly asked by RBI and many other uh, examination bodies. Therefore, do remember them. Now, the importance of MSMEs, which can be uh, understood through various facts, latest facts related to MSMEs. Uh, in the growth of Indian economy, MSMEs play a major role because 63.38 million enterprises in India uh, are MSMEs. That means more than 6 crore enterprises in India are micro, small and medium enterprises. 111 million people, that means 11 crore people get jobs through or under MSMEs. Their contribution to GDP is huge, over 28%. It includes both manufacturing and service sector and they contribute 45% to manufacturing output. So if manufacturing output can be divided into large enterprises and MSMEs, MSMEs contribute almost half to the entire manufacturing output and more than 40% of exports. You can just imagine how important are they. More than uh, a third of exports in India go from micro, small and medium enterprises. Okay, There are a lot of institutions for MSMEs, but I would want to focus on SIDB which is the apex financial institutions for supporting financing and development of MSMEs. And uh, a recommendation uh, has been made with respect to SIDB as well. Now, uh, I'll be uh, going, going back to that recommendation also very soon. What are the major challenges faced by MSME sector? I would say the major challenges are three. Number one, access to formal credit is limited to MSMEs. Number two, limited access to quality raw material. So they don't get access to quality raw material. That's where the quality of the finished product is also limited and limited market for finished products because they don't know how to export or even if they want to, the rules and regulations are not so friendly towards MSMEs and friendly in general as well so that they can export very easily. Uh, which is not the case when we talk about China and that is why China is also is able to sorry export a lot more than India. Okay. Now, because of these problems, uh, an expert committee was constituted under UK SENA. So this is something that you need to remember. Number one, UK SENA panel for MSMEs. What are the recommendations? Uh, a lot of recommendations were given uh, and all of them hold a lot of importance. Please listen to me carefully. Number one, the committee recommends for creation of distressed asset fund of 5000 crore. Now, what is this distressed asset fund? Let's say because of ban on plastics, a lot of MSMEs uh, become NPA or close down their business or something bad happens to them because suddenly you put a ban on plastics and some of these MSMEs might be 
creating plastic bags. Now, what would happen if you have a distressed asset fund is this fund <clears throat> will be used to bail out these companies or either to revive them and create something else out of them, whatever might be the possible solution. So this distressed asset fund will be used to basically assist these units which are in clusters and ensure that they don't go bankrupt and close down because they provide a lot of opportunities to local youth and they also contribute towards exports and overall Indian growth. Okay, so number one is distressed assets fund of 5000 crore. Number two, government sponsored fund of funds of 10,000 crore. Now, what is this fund of funds? Let's say I have a, I'm a venture capitalist or I'm an investor uh, uh, and I want to invest in, uh, let's say just like Sachin Bansal, I want to invest in, uh, let's say uh, an MSME, a small enterprise. Now, I might not have the funds and therefore to support me, there would be another fund of funds which will help me in investing in these enterprises and managing these enterprises. But I would get my money through this fund of funds which is financed by the government. And the corpus of this is expected or recommended by the committee to be 10,000 crore. Okay. Number three is the committee caters to the problem of delayed payment to MSMEs. So it says that a lot of MSMEs uh, go bankrupt or are not able to survive in the long run because let's say MSME, this is an enterprise and this sells to let's say a wholesaler, uh, which is let's say a big wholesaler and this wholesaler refuses to pay or pays in let's say 90 days or pays in, uh, you know, let's say 120 days or something like that, or they create hurdles in making payments on time, then this MSME can actually file a complaint under this recommendations for which it said that an amendment should be made in MSME Act requiring number one MSMEs to mandatorily upload all their invoices above a certain limit with the government. Uh, and for this, a special uh, purpose vehicle SPV kind of an uh, uh, entity should be created with which these MSMEs can go online and file their invoices so that if something goes wrong tomorrow, if the party refuses to pay, then these MSMEs can do go to that body. They don't have to go to the court and waste a lot of money. Okay, I hope you understood this. The last one is uh, uh, committee caters to the problem of public procurement policy. So right now, PSUs or government departments have to procure 25% from MSMEs and uh, this recommendation says that they should be procuring from MSMEs only through government e-marketplace so that there is transparency and less corruption. Okay, the next one is related to GSTN. Uh, the committee deliberated on the issue of GSTN Udyog Aadhaar Memorandum and uh, from the point of view of committee, it is believed that GST is good for MSMEs and not bad for MSMEs. But majority of MSMEs are still not into or still not into the entire corpus of uh, GST network. So it says that uh, please develop a unique enterprise identifier so that uh, and all the entities in the country can be identified and they can be included in GST network so that tax compliance is possible. And because this GST network, GST availability of GST number also determines the future growth, number one, and also whether they can sell to a lot of government and other private parties or not. Okay. If they do not have GST network, uh, if they're not enrolled in GST, sorry, then they will not be, it will not be possible for them to sell either to the government or to sell to a lot of big private enterprises. And therefore, GST, according to this committee is good and therefore they should be enrolled in GST. And the last recommendation, as I said, is to expand the role of SIDB. I told you that I'll be talking about SIDB. Now, it says that uh, whatever priority sector lending shortfall is there with respect to MSMEs, in instead of giving it to uh, putting it in, in, in RIDF, they should be put in another similar fund corpus and it should be given to SIDB. And SIDB can use that to lend either to the state governments for infrastructure and cl uh, cluster development or for any other purpose which is uh, useful for development of MSMEs. Okay, so these are the major recommendations. Uh, okay, one more major recommendation that I forgot to highlight PSB in 59minutes.com. So this PSB loans in 59minutes.com says that uh, loan up to 1 crore, loan up to 1 crore should be to any, any MSME should be approved uh, uh, you know, a notional approval should be given 
on that loan uh, to the MSME within 59 minutes less than one hour. Now it says this committee says that the threshold of the loan should be increased from one crore to five crore. Okay, so this is the major recommendation with respect to increasing the threshold of loan limit in PSB lo loans in 59minutes.com. So these are all recommendations of UK Sena panel. I hope you have understood the background of MSMEs, how to determine MSMEs, what are the problems being faced, importance of MSMEs, and finally the recommendations of UK Sena panel on MSMEs. So this was all, all for this particular lesson. If you liked it, do not forget to subscribe to my channel, press the bell icon so that you don't miss out on such important future videos which are going to be very helpful in your last minute preparation for RBI examination. All the very best. Take care.